Hi, this is Mary McCready with the Urban Conservation Unit. We just got done doing an irrigation assessment at a home here in Miami-Dade County. Um, and what we saw was actually typical of most irrigation systems we see. Actually about 79% of the homes we see have indexing valves. Um, so we want to tell you a little bit about indexing valves and how systems can be improved that have these systems. Um, this is an indexing valve and basically it works off of pressure. So the irrigation system turns on, the water runs through here and down into one of the pipes which goes to a zone. This is a property that participated in the irrigation retrofit program. Originally, the irrigation system had a mechanical timer, indexing valve system, and a pump. They received the soil moisture sensor system and decided to add to the conservation effort by including electric valves onto their irrigation system to replace the indexing valve. In order to conserve water, the system also has a soil moisture sensor added, and basically the sensor gets buried in the ground about three inches deep, it measures how much water is in the soil and then prevents unnecessary irrigation from occurring. So no more irrigating right after a rainstorm or during a rainstorm. So it should increase the efficiency of the system. The other advantage of a digital timer over a mechanical timer um, system is that you can program more precisely how long you want irrigation zones to run. With the mechanical timer, you have to use the pins and each pin amounts to a certain number of minutes. So you can only go in that interval of minutes. Um, as well as the motor slows down, you could get longer run times than you intend to. In addition, the new digital timer, which is replacing the mechanical timer, requires a pump start relay in order to turn on the pump. The original uh, mechanical timer will actually have enough power to turn on a pump while the digital timer only outputs 24 volts, so it does not have the power to do that. look at this and say okay well I'm gonna do a 220 load so this circuit right here needs to be in, strong enough to handle it a 220 load right okay and then we have these two red wires just 24 volts that go to the controller and the controller needs to put out a strong enough circuit signal to trip this magnet that will lock that power relay top is the end Bottom is the out. Pump was going off at 220. What we did, they had 220, they had two legs of 110, and they had a neutral, I believe was what disconnected or yes. not connected. And the ground, as we'll connect to the pump ground, we have our neutral circuit, and we'll take the neutral and one leg of the 110, run this to the controller to feed the controller, which is a 110 controller, and then the Another section of this 110 wire, and this 110 will go to feed the pump. And then the two legs of the 110 going out to the pump will connect to the bottom of the relay. These two wires are 24 volt wires that go to the controller. See, this goes up to a one phase, three horsepower, 120, and 240. Okay. So it can work on both. It can work for 110 and 220. 220 is more efficient to the motors and the um, the rotation of the motor. I believe it's a uh, rotation. It's half. Yeah, it's half. Because the, it's uh, uh, it's 11 amps at 220 and it's 22 amps at uh, 110. Right, right. So you're gonna have less amperage use for a 220 motor versus a 110 motor.